Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to another Transforming the Tarot. Today we will be continuing the process of turning my Akashic Tarot into a handmade oracle deck. So today I thought we'd do some darker cards. So one of the things that I've been wanting to do with this deck is to incorporate some of those kind of shadowy words, those darker themes and concepts. So I have um, a couple of different papers here that I have found. I found this great, it's actually called a Wolf Pack. And as you can see, I got it on sale for $4 and it has some great papers in it. Um, not all of which that I will be using for this particular project, but quite a few of them I would like to use on different cards. Um, I did also print out some pictures. This is some stock photography that I found that I might like to incorporate um, in with some of those ideas. And I also have um, some words that I have pulled out um, from, you know, magazines, various places. Um, this particular word, origin, doesn't really fall into sort of my dark theme, but what I wanted to do with that one um, is to kind of incorporate the as above, so below idea with that. So that's why I have that one pulled out because I do want to use some of these, these papers for that. And then I have a few um, keywords that I came up with that um, really tie into that, those shadow concepts or shadow words that I might like to pull in. Um, some of them do obviously relate to the images that I've printed and some, a couple of them are just um, uh, words that I, I want to incorporate at some point into this deck. So I don't know if that will be today. We'll see how the whole process goes. So as usual, we are going to be working through our Akashic Tarot and I am almost done with this particular 62 card deck. I do have a whole nother box of these so that I can continue the process. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. So there are 14 cards left and that is it. And then I will have done 62 cards. Um, today we're going to do probably three, maybe four, because I do want to do that origin card and I'm not sure if I will do that on camera or not. It depends on how long this whole process takes. So I'm going to pull that one aside and put that word with it and then pull three cards to work with. Um, for today. These are all words that I would like to incorporate in the deck, so we'll just see how far we get. Um, as always, I will, you know, do a check-in with the deck at, at the end so that we can see what I've actually created because not all of it may end up being on camera. Um, so to get started, I kind of need to get a little bit organized. Um, I definitely want to use some of these images, but just to make this a little bit easier for me to contend with, I'm going to cut them down. Um, this obviously, the uh, this does have a keyword that goes with it and it's this drowned word. Um, and this image, I have either death or decay, I'm not sure which. And um, for this particular image, I was thinking inner critic. So we'll see how it goes. I don't always incorporate, um, you know, kind of these photo images with, with the deck, but I've done a few of them this way and I do really um, like the process of it. And I kind of hate to, I don't want to tear yet because I don't know how much of that I need. I can always reprint these words if need be. So this goes with my drowned. And this one is either going to be death and decay. And again, like I said, I'm not sure exactly um, how this process is gonna go because it's a very fluid um, process. It's a very organic process, I guess I should say. So I also have the word disrupt and the word depression, both of which are words that I do want to include. And we'll just kind of see how far we get. So now that we kind of have like a mess, really, I, I just made a mess. That's pretty much all I did. Um, let's see what I have here. So I kind of liken those papers together and I'm thinking these might actually go really well together and 
I definitely want to pull in um, some some blacks and we might end up pulling in some of that starry paper that we had. I'm going to put that with the bears for right now. Because um, that, that might actually work well for our inner critic, actually. Okay, so now that I've made a mess, where are we going to start? Let's begin with the drowned card because I seem to have the most papers for that. And what I want to do now is trying to decide, do I want this image like to cover the whole card with this image and then to accent with these? And I think that is what I want to do. Um, these I just printed off on just using my regular color printer and I printed them off. Um, just it, I did it at a little bit higher resolution, but not anything super fancy. They are on regular copy paper, so nothing too terribly fancy here. I just um, want to get a basic, you know, decent printout of them to use. But you know, if if I do mess it up, the the great thing about that is that I can just print another copy of it if I need to. So I'm just gonna throw some glue on the card. And generally I don't cover the whole card with the image, but in this case I'm going to. And hold it up to the light to kind of make sure that um, hand is in the middle. So now I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And this is why we do multiple cards at once. So let's, let's do the death card. And I think we're gonna basically repeat the process here. Maybe not. Actually, maybe what I want to do is with this one, I think I want to do the I'm not not sure about this particular paper because now that I've got this up against here, it feels a little bit washed out. Um, I feel like I need that darker paper, that darker wood that we had last month. So I have some of that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's not really a great tonal match either. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it aside because it might work for some of the other cards. Let's just see what happens if I kind of do that. I don't know why I like that word received. And then to overlay the decay over the top of it. I don't know. It's just kind of kind of working for me. Okay. So that there. Cover up maybe that dollar sign. That there. So this just starts to be, you know, it's just kind of a kind of a play. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And right now it probably just kind of looks like a hot mess. Hopefully. Hopefully, it will not look like a hot mess when I'm done. So, what do we need to do first? First, it looks like I need to, because I've layered everything over the top of this image. So, I need to glue this image down right about here. And one of the things that I, I tend to do is to kind of bend the paper around which kind of gives me an idea of where that's gonna sit and I kind of like it off-center right there so we're gonna go right about there so now what I'm gonna do is just run glue along the sides that I have open Lay it down, probably should make sure it's actually straight, though it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, and I'm just pulling back that side that I was holding on to and glue it down. All right, so we're letting that one sit. So let's see, are we gonna end up doing the same thing with this one? I need to not lose my words. So with this one, I just want the hand. 
So maybe because these three, we've all done the image first and overlaid over the top of it, I think we'll just keep going with that, that process. And then that will just give us a nice base to work with. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just glue this image down. And then we'll work our way back through again. So what I want is the hand. I want to make sure that black is right on that edge there. Now we need to cut this excess off so I can see what we're working with. I don't want to, um, you know, I don't like to have to trim these cards often, but when you have this much excess, it's hard to tell where your edges are. So you kind of need to, to get this excess off, even though I try not to do this too many times and try to leave it to the end if I can. But now that gives us a better idea of where we're at. And I think that, do we want to do it this way? Or do we want to do the opposite? So into the light and this into the dark, which I think I like better because that contrast really helps it to, um, to show up. So I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit so I have a little bit better idea what I'm working with here. And that's kind of a neat layered effect, right? So we basically have the same thing going, just mirror imaged here, which I do kind of like. I like that there. And I'm actually not going to ink the edges because I like that, that pop of white. Keeps it very um, modern looking. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is just glue. I'm just going to do glue on this whole thing. Even though I generally don't like to do that because it gets going to get glue all over my board. And as you can probably tell, there's glue all over my board. But that's what it's there for, right? To protect my desk. So I think I want to go right about here. Okay. And getting it all over my fingers as as usual all right so there is that and now we let that one dry and come back over here to our decay card so let's trim the excess off of this so we can see what we're working with here pretty close to it and again I'm just kind of guessing where that card is So I don't, I want to get my received word, but I don't want to cover up that particular bone. So we're going to go right there. And I am going to kind of slide it back and forth just a little bit just to make sure that I've got glue everywhere. Slide it to the end. So that is going to go there and then I was thinking about doing this here because it, it's the opposite. That's where I pulled from. So it really kind of mimics that decay. Of course I need to ink it up here. Again, just kind of guessing where that glue needs to be. No real idea. Just, just guessing. That is gonna work well. And in this video, you can see we're going to be doing a lot of switching around back and forth. <laughs> I think, well, I need to get this pink off. So I definitely don't want the pink on there. I just want the word or the phrase I suppose inner critic and I kind of 
think I like that just floating right there. If I really even want... Actually, I'm wondering if I should just like really just make this card just, it's just dark. Like black, like I like that. And then maybe just pull in some of that tear in there. And I feel like, I feel like I need to mimic the white I have going on up here. So maybe just need to add a layer of white right there. Okay, let's put that there. That I can tear off the excess. And I think it's really just. And don't get glue on it. Glue does not come off copy paper very well. It'll come off a um, it'll come off scrapbook paper better than it'll come off copy paper. All right, where are we at? Where are we at here? Cutting into the card <laughs> every time. Every time I cut into the card. Okay, that is salvageable. That probably not so much. Okay, that looks pretty cool, actually. I don't know, like, if we even need too much more, or maybe that just needs to go up there. Okay, rethinking, rethinking. Recalculating. What if I do that and get decay up there? It does have multiple words on it, which isn't really my favorite because I really kind of wanted this to go Maybe we could do that because I don't want there to be confusion about the keyword. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I hope white raw edge off there. I'm just going to run a bead of glue down the bottom. And I feel like that just, let's wait on that just until these dry and I can trim them off and then we might need to add something to the top there. So that is what that card is looking like so far. And I want to do now add these extra little bits on here. For this one, we'll just run a bead of glue up top. Try not to get a bunch of excess glue on the back side because then I have to put my scissors through it and I hate to put my scissors through glue. Okay. And on to the next. And here we go with the trimming again. <laughs> That looks pretty cool. I mean, I originally thought to just have this floating here, but kind of feels like it wants to be right there, right? Inner critic. Yep. I feel like it just needs to be right there. I think the word and the imagery, the word and the hand is really all you need. I think that 
very powerfully gets that idea across. There we go. Okay. All right. So wrapping things up here, getting getting to the end. Okay. So I'm liking I'm liking those. So I think we just need to wrap up this one. I kind of wish I'd made that smaller. Okay, a little bit of a, of a waste of paper here, but um, this one I just did on my, like my little inkjet paper or printer, like the one that doesn't, it's not color or anything. It just, one that prints very efficiently. And I am liking this little one. If it's still readable, that will be the question. So I think I like that. So let's go ahead and just glue that down. Probably should have made sure it was more in the middle before I tucked it down there, but looks pretty, pretty well in the middle to me. Okay. So now let's find my little scissors. Okay, so I have finished up the cards and I actually, if you can see, I actually did quite a few extras because we did these first three on camera and then I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other cards. Um, you know, I was just watching some videos and just crafting away. So I thought we'd just go ahead and take a quick peek at them. So this was the inner credit card that we created together. The drowned card and the decay card. So then I created a couple of extra cards. This is the explore card. Uh, so that one was a fairly quick and easy card. This is one that I created that doesn't have a title. Um, sometimes I do that. I just kind of am feeling the paper, so I'm going with it and I will find a title later for it. This was the bear card that I created. Um, again, this one doesn't have a title yet, but I'm going to add a title to that one as well. This is the Connect, which I just realized I spelled wrong. So that's fun. So I will be recovering that. This is what I get for watching videos while I'm crafting. And I could totally edit this out, but I'm going to leave it so you guys can see that I totally make mistakes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to recover that with the black paper and um, rewrite that word because I totally spelled it wrong because I was not paying attention. Um, I, I blame... Who was I watching? I think I was watching uh, Lisa at Supportive Tarot with Lisa. So Lisa, it's all your fault. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so this is the card that I created for depression. This is one that I'm not really sure how I feel about this one. This one I need to sit with for a while and think about if that's really um, a card that's going to end up working for me. And then here we have the death card. And I do actually quite like this one. And the origin card that I had talked about creating in this video. So I have that kind of as above, so below, but then it's also mirrored. And I ended up using the um, wolf prints here in this one. So I think that one came out pretty cool. Overall, really, um, really enjoyed the process. Like I said, these ones were extras that I created. Need to fix that one. Um, these two don't actually have titles yet, so we'll need to fix that. That was an extra one I created. And then the three that um, we created on camera. So I thought also at um, this point, since we are kind of at to the end of the year, and I have been doing this process uh, pretty much through most of 2019, I think. I'm going to try to stack these very carefully because they do not have contact paper on them yet. Um, so I thought we would go through and just kind of take a look at some of the the cards that we've created along the way um, some that I've done on camera and some that I've done off of camera so this is the yeah whole collection of cards that I've created now the majority of these are covered in contact paper and were ones that we created on camera 
So that would be those ones. I do have um, extra cards that do not have titles yet. So maybe we'll just kind of make some piles here. So these ones are the extras without titles. These ones are the ones we've done over the last few months that I still do need to um, fix and of course cover in contact paper. Okay, so just real quick, these were the ones that of course we just went through. We have Inner Critic, we have Drowned, Decay, explore what's supposed to be connect depression death origin treasure this moment hello sweet autumn harvest with gratitude and retreat so let's go ahead and take a look at the ones that we have done i think i think most of these were done on camera these ones have all been covered in contact paper so they're all good to go so we have we are made of stars Believe in Magic, Stay Wild Moon Child, Metamorphosis, Grateful Heart, Grow, Restore, Survive, Emerge, we have Endless, Strive, Reflection, Clarity, Simplicity, Curiosity, The Wander Wonder, Dreamer, Wishful Thinking, this one does not have a title, that should be in that one, My Tribe, this one doesn't have a title either, <laughs> Wherever Life Plants You, Bloom with Grace, Breath of Fresh Air, Yourself, Grounded, this was the very first card I, I created, Old Fashioned Heart, Sometimes you need to be lost, moonbeams and memories, and new beginnings. So those are the ones that um, already have titles on them, and I'll just pull these up. We just saw these ones, but these are the ones that I have created that do not have titles yet. Um, most of these I did not do on camera, so we just saw these ones. We saw these ones last month. And these are some of the other ones that um, I've just created along the way that I was just basically, you know, playing with. And that one's totally upside down. And I need to um, decide if I want to keep them and if they're going to have um, titles added to them. I think they might be upside down. <laughs> so that one. Stay in frame here. So just a couple of them, and you can see I've definitely left space for titles on most of these. But that is where we're at, and let's see, what do we have left? We have four cards left. So this is a 62 card deck, and I have four cards left. So I probably need to go ahead and finish these four up and... Um, get some titles going for these cards and then kind of go through and see what I've got. I do have, I think I mentioned, I do have another box of the um, Akashic Tarot that I got when Hay House was having a sale. Um, so I do have decks that I can, a whole nother deck that I can continue to work and, and work on this uh, process because I do really like it. Um, it's it's a very fun process. I really enjoy connecting with the cards in these in this way. Um, I really enjoy the whole, just just the whole process of creating these cards. Um, it's been a, a really great experience for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, watching some of these cards come to life. I do intend to um, put these together in a deck to make available to everybody. I do not know if I will include all of the cards. Um, I will probably go through and just pull out the ones that really speak to me. Um, some of them. I think are really, really great. And some of them um, don't really, you know, once I got them finished, mm, they don't really, really connect for me that well. And sometimes that happens. And I notice that definitely happens when I try to do too many cards at one time, which is generally why I try to stick with three cards. Three cards seems to be the magic number for me. It's enough cards that I can rotate through, as you saw, waiting for the glue to dry. Um, in between each kind of phase of the of the deck and then um, 
but still allows me to really think about what I'm creating and um, and the, the messages that I want to come through these these cards. When I do more than three, um, even though I like uh, some of these extra cards that I did, like I do really like the origin card and I really like the death card um, and I really like the connect card even though I have to fix that. Um, like the depression card, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I do like the word depression, but I'm not sure that I want to actually include that idea in into this deck. So that might be, for instance, one that I don't include. Um, you know, there are a couple of uh, like cards that I created in here that don't necessarily have titles that I'm not sure uh, if I will end up using them at all. Like a bear, I know, I know I want to use the bear card. I just need to get a title for that one. But and some of them, um, like this one, I will probably definitely include because some of them really work for me. And then there are some like this that I feel like I was just slapping, um, slapping paper on cards. And I, I feel like you could definitely tell that in some of the cards like this one. I mean, really with these two, I was kind of just playing with sort of backgrounds. And then my intention was to layer over the top of that with things that had meaning, um, but that just really didn't ever end up happening. Um, like this one, I definitely feel, you know, works pretty well. I just need to, to figure out what keyword I want to include on that. But some of them, you know, just some of them were, even though I created them, some of them really missed the mark for me. And some of them um, I really do like, you know, like these three, I just haven't really sat down to think about what title I want on these. So that's just kind of a, a recap of this process to date. Um, since we are at, you know, the end of 2019, I thought we'd just check in. Uh, I hope to finish up the probably last, um, the last four cards in this deck. I want to finish up by the end of the year um, so that I can actually begin fresh with the next box in 2020. And this might just be something that I do all year long, every year. We'll see how, how long it goes um, and how just really how long I feel that this, this is making a connection for me. And as long as it's making connection for me, I fully intend to, to keep um, moving forward with it. So I hope you have enjoyed this whole process of watching the Akashic Tarot become my own handmade oracle. Um, like I said, I fully do intend to continue this process in 2020 as I do have another deck to work on. Um, but we'll see if it if it grows and changes and shifts at all as, as I make that transition from one year to the next or if we continue kind of on like we have been. That'll be, that'll be interesting for me to see because this is a very organic process. I don't think about it a ton before I sit down to make cards. Um, occasionally, like in, as in the case of a couple of these cards, um, I do find words that really do speak to me. So I pull those out and then I find images that really do speak to me. So in some cases, there are things like that that, that happen. But for the most part, it's really just sitting down and letting the, the moment have its way with me and just crafting um, in a way that's that's very organic and, and fluid and just kind of in the moment. So sometimes it comes out great and sometimes they really, they don't come out so hot, but that's okay. Anyway, again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this transforming the tarot of turning my Akashic tarot into a handmade oracle. I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.